Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy Thanksgiving. Um, let us read our call to worship together. No matter how far we wander from you, O oh God, your, your steadfast, steadfast love finds us. No matter how unjust the world seems to us, O oh God, your steadfast righteousness sustains us. No matter how vulnerable our lives seem to us, O oh God, your steadfast presence gives us hope. No matter how unloved and uncared for we feel, O oh God, you hear our cries and answer our prayers. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So this Thanksgiving Sunday, we have so much to be thankful for, no matter what season of life we may find ourselves in at the moment. We can trust that God has a plan for us, even if we don't fully understand what it is right now. In our passage today, Joseph is put in jail for no just cause, and yet the Lord was with him and showed him steadfast love. God was still at work in Joseph's life even while he was in jail, and Joseph carried on with his purpose and was even put in charge of his fellow prisoners. God's favor was upon him, and Joseph's story doesn't end there. It just forms part of his storyline. Our story also doesn't end in the current circumstances we are in. We may experience deep pain and suffering during difficult times, but we can cling to our Savior for strength and healing as we strive to put our hope and trust in him to sustain us. Let us stand together as we worship our God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his love endures forever. Thank you. Thank you. 
through Christ. 
peace of Christ and greet the neighbors around you. We have a seat and we'll move on to learning our faith, catechism number 49. What does God require in the second commandment? That we in no way make any image of God, nor worship him in any other way than as he has commanded in his word. And now I'll lead us in this prayer of confession and intercession. Forgive us, Lord, when we are struggling with life, searching for answers in vain, relying on our own strength and failing again. Remind us, Lord, that you are the strength upon whom we call and call, the power to endure, the answer that we seek, the one who does can see safely fall. Forgive us, Lord, when we forget. Let's have a time of silent prayer. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our words of grace are from Psalm chapter 28, verses 6 and 7. Blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. The Lord, the Lord is, is my strength and my shield. And my in him my heart trusts, and I am helped. helped. My heart exalts, and with my song, song I give thanks to him. So at this time, we uh, dismiss the children to go to Sunday school. And I just have um, a couple of announcements. Once again, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope everyone's enjoying this 
second long weekend of ours. Um, Psalm ch chapter 100, verses 3 to 5 says, Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are the people of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Um, since it is Thanksgiving, tomorrow the church office will be closed. Just be aware of that. And a couple more announcements. Just uh, save the date. Uh, the last Sunday of October, the 29th, is going to be our fall fair. So particularly, particularly with the, those with kids, um, definitely set aside that time. More details to come. And secondly, parenting in the 21st century, there is going to be... Um, uh, on f no November 3rd, which is a Friday from 8 to 9 p.m. This is coming up. So if that's of interest to you, um, check out the website, icrc.ca slash parenting. Um, we'll go into our tithes and offering now. Um, as Christians, we believe it is our duty to give back to God a portion of what he has given to us, both financially and through the gifts that he has equipped us with. So with a thankful heart, we joyfully give back to him, while at the same time declaring that we trust that he will continue to provide for us. Um, you can send your tithes um, and offerings through an e-transfer to give at, uh, give at icrc.ca or drop them off in the offering boxes at the back. And if you're looking for ways to serve in our church, check out the website, icrc.ca slash serve. Let's just have a time of uh, Thanksgiving prayer. Father, we thank you for your constant presence in our lives through all of life's circumstances. We thank you for this church family that we can fellowship with, serve alongside and live life with as we each journey to draw closer in our relationship with you. Thank you for providing our daily bread. And we especially pray for those of us going through a difficult or stressful time that you would have uphold us with your strength in our time of need. We acknowledge that you are our creator and trust in your sovereign plan. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Michaela is now going to read our scripture for today, followed by Pastor David delivering God's word to us. Good morning. Our, pa our passage today is taken from Genesis 39, verses 20 to 23. And I'm reading from the Legacy Standard Bible. So Joseph Masters took him and put him into jail, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the jail. But Yahweh was with Joseph and extended loving kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. So the chief jailer gave into the hand of Joseph all the prisoners who were in the jail. So that whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's hand because Yahweh was with him, and whatever he did, Yahweh made him to succeed. This is the word of the Lord. Happy Thanksgiving. Take two. Happy Thanksgiving. Take three. Happy Thanksgiving. Take four. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Works? Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. You got it five times, my phone. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Uh, we thank the Lord for providing for our needs all the time. Not some of the time, not most of the time, but all the time. And today we come to the Holy Scriptures to see what uh, the Lord has in store for us. If you have your Bible, uh, you can turn to Genesis chapter 39. We're looking at 39 and 40. So chapters 39 and 40. If you have your Bible, please turn to that part of the Bible. And then uh, we can look at the passage. So while you're at it, can you read chapter 39 on your seat by yourself silently? Not quietly, but I mean, you know, silently, yeah.
Okay, maybe just up to there. Then we can go together from here. In chapter 39, it says this, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, official of Pharaoh, captain of the bodyguard, bought him from the Ismaelites who had brought him, who had brought him down there. Yahweh, or God's name in the Old Testament, Yahweh was with Joseph, so he became a successful man. Now his master saw that Yahweh was with him and how Yahweh had caused all that he did to succeed in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended on him, Potiphar, and he appointed him overseer over his house, and all that he owned he gave in his hand. Now it happened that from the time he appointed him overseer in his house and over all that he owned, Yahweh blessed the Egyptian's house on account of of Joseph. Thus the blessing of Yahweh was upon all that he owned in the house and in the field. He, so he left everything he owned in Joseph's hand and with him there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. If you recall, Joseph was the favorite of his father so his father made him a special coat, very colorful, and he became the envy of his other brothers. Joseph would go out to where they were pasturing and then come back to the father and give reports about what they do. The Bible tells us he gave an evil report, not a good report of what they're doing. We don't know what they did, but it was not a pleasant report. They hate him a lot, and then one day the father sent him out again. So when he got there, the brother says, now this is the chance, the father's not here. We can kill this guy right here. That's a lot of hatred. Kill him right here. Anyway, one of the brothers says, let's not kill him. Let's just throw him in a pit. He was hoping that later on he can come back and kind of rescue him. But guess what? Some people were passing by a caravan. So they sold Joseph to this group of merchants who brought him to Egypt. And now Joseph was a slave, sold to Potiphar, who was the bodyguard of the king or of Pharaoh himself. And this is the two things that Potiphar did, the red words. Potiphar saw that God was with Joseph. He saw that everything he did went okay. And then he appointed him the chief steward or the butler or the CEO over his house and all that he owned. Saw, appointed, two things. In the last quarter of the 20th century, competition among the big companies and the small companies as well in the world was like this. I called up, oh, how much is 20 boxes? Okay. Yeah, what about 50 boxes? Oh, I get a discount. Okay, great. What about 120 boxes or more discount? What's the price again of 20? It took me 30 minutes to get it sorted out. Meanwhile, my competition did it in one minute. So I was astounded. He, how can he speak so fast? And how can the other side have such a photographic memory? So I sent somebody to check it out. It seems that aside from the telephone, they have a special machine called FAX. So you push the paper in, a copy comes out on the other side. They can review all the prices they want. I said, oh, that's why. I must buy an FAX. So I got my fax machine. I thought competition is now even. Guess what? He was getting more sales. So I sent somebody to spy, and they say, well, I think the other side got colored images. What? I thought faxes are all black and white. No, I think it's called email. Email, what's that? I think it has something to do with a computer. Oh, so I bought one. How come I can afford to buy fax machines and computers when I'm not a big company? Well, because the manufacturers have to make the cost very low so they can sell very wide. Then instead of making a lot of money in one sale, they make a little over many, many transactions, so they make a lot of money. Now it's affordable. Guess what's happening today? 
whatever machines you have, the other company has. You got a telephone, they do. Cell phone, they do. Fax machine, they do. Computer, emails, everything they do. Everything. What is the competition now? How do I beat them when everything is affordable, big or small company? Who's their manager? Who's my manager? It's about talent. That's what Pharaoh is doing. This man is a talent. This man is a genius. He is the best manager. If I get him, my house will be better. My farms will be better. My everything will go better. I need him. Not the former manager, not the other one, not my cousin, but him. It's about people, talent. The competition today is like that. And that's why people pirate other people's or, you know, they recruit successful managers from other company. Pharaoh found a talent in Joseph. And that's why the blessings came. The Bible says from the time Potiphar appointed Joseph overseer, Yahweh blessed his house on account of Joseph. Thus the blessing of Yahweh was upon all that he owned in the house and in the field. Everything's going well. Potiphar is very blessed because I got Joseph. Excellent. On account of Joseph, I got what I want. I'm hung. Yeah. I'm hung. Okay, again. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. I got the blessing because I got the man. But the Bible says it's account of Joseph, on account of Joseph, that God blessed Potiphar. If you find the talent, that's a great thing. It's even better if you find the source. In science, we talk about cause and effect. You got this temperature, you got H2O, becomes ice. You got this temperature, you got H2O, becomes liquid, and so forth. Cause, effect, yeah. Potiphar found Joseph. But he did not worship the God of Joseph. He was hoping that by way of Joseph, I can get what his God can give. So Potiphar did not change his religious affiliation or loyalty. He remained outside of Yahweh's circle, but his God, Joseph. And what's Joseph if not the cause, if not the effect? The country boy went to visit his city cousin and discovered that the city cousin has no well, no bucket, no ropes, not 10 feet away, not 100 meters away. And he's got no river or stream, but he's got water every day because he's got this thing on the wall. He just have to turn it on. And he wonders, how long can it last? Two minutes? Five minutes? Maybe one hour? Well, it turns out it can last like 24 hours or more. It just keeps running. Wow! So he bought one of this and brought it home to his little home in the countryside. And he pushed it into the wall, turned it on, and guess what came out? How come it doesn't work here? It must be the wrong wall. So he took it out, pushed it into another wall. It didn't work. Maybe it's, maybe it's the wrong spot. Maybe it's too high. Put it low. It didn't work. Why? You got what I mean, right? Yes. It's not about Joseph. Joseph is a faucet with no water. It's about the reservoir that can give you water 24 hours plus, 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 plus. A long, long time. Almost like endless. Yes. You see the effect? Sometimes we think the channel is the source. Sometimes we think the instrument is the cause. Well, in a way, but that's not source. That's not where the supply comes from. Yes, this is what's happening here. You see, 
God blessed Joseph, and it happens that Joseph has a larger responsibility. It used to be he does just a few things, so this was successful. The master says, oh, this is a good guy. We got to give him more, like all. So now he's got all, and now this is all successful. Here's the question. Can God do it without Joseph? Can God do it without Moses? Can God defeat Goliath without little boy David? Can God make it happen without the prophet, priest, and judge Samuel? Can he? Yeah. Can he be without Joseph? Of course he can be without Joseph. He's just a faucet. There's no water in it. But then you cannot have Joseph without God. You cannot have Moses without God. You cannot have David without God. You cannot have Samuel without God. Some things are dispensable because they are replaceable. If Moses says, oh Lord, I don't want to go back to Egypt and lead the people out, you think God will get stuck? Of course not. He'll get somebody else to do it. And he can still do it. We are given opportunities to serve the Lord. Who's Joseph today? Who's the channel today? Joseph today is sitting in front of me. Joseph today is standing in front of you. We are Joseph. Do you want to be used by the Lord? Do you want to be a channel of blessing for the Lord? That's a simple question. But I'm just a faucet. I don't have water to dispense. It's okay. Just be the faucet. The water will come. Faucet by itself, no water. Faucet with God, plenty of water. The challenge for us today is to be a channel of God's blessings in all things. You know, sometimes we hear, oh, Pastor So has retired. Oh, he has retired, so he's doing nothing? No. He's doing the Lord's work, except that in another, in another, in another place. From that position, he has retired. But from the ministry, he has not. He continues to serve in many places. Why? Because in ministry, you don't retire. When you serve the Lord, you don't stop. When you live for the Lord, you don't pause. There's no recess. There's no holiday. I'm on holiday, so it's okay not to live for the Lord. I can sin a little. There's no such thing. Yeah. In all things, not just yesterday, not just today, all things yesterday, all things today, all things tomorrow. Strive to be a channel of the Lord's goodness. If you're given an opportunity to serve in your spiritual home on earth, which means our church community, spiritual home on earth, eternal spiritual home above, get it. Do it. Don't say, I don't have water. My water is good for two minutes only. My water is good for two hours only. No. You have no water at all. You're a faucet. Yes, but the Lord has. And he will give more than two hours. The Lord will give to you if he calls you. The Lord will equip you if he summons you. So, in all things, be a channel of God's goodness. Not just at church, at home, where you work. Be a channel. Let the goodness of God come upon you. Let him bless the work of your hands so people around you will say, the Lord is with him. That's why she's successful in what she's doing. That's why she shines among us. Why? Because it's about the Lord working through you. Yes, in all things, be a channel of God's goodness. All things, everywhere. Joseph was beautiful in form and appearance or handsome. His master's wife set her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me, come to bed with me. 
But he said, Behold, with me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house, and he has given all that he owns into my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, and he has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great evil and sin against God? So it happened that as she po spoke to day, uh, Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her to lie beside her or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work, he's a chief steward, and none of the men of the household was there inside. Then she seized him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled outside. Now when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fed outside, she called to the man of her household, saying, See, my husband has brought in a Hebrew to us to laugh at us or make fun of us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I screamed. Now when he heard that I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled. Here is the evidence. And then she placed his garment beside her until her husband, his master, came home. Then he spoke to him with this word, saying, The Hebrew slave whom you brought to us came to me to laugh at me, or to make fun of me. And as I screamed, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Now when Potiphar heard the words of his wife, his anger burned. So Potiphar put Joseph into the jail where the king's prisoners were confined. Joseph was doing well, and then the wife liked him. The master liked him first. Now the wife wants something, but it's not admin work. And Joseph said, no, I can't go to bed with you. I can't have sex with you because you belong to your husband. You're the wife of your master, my master. So that's not within my scope. I'm not responsible for you. I don't oversee you. I do everything else except you. And then she framed Joseph, and Joseph went to jail. Joseph says, my master trusted me. He still trusts me today. That's why everything is under my care. I supervise all the servants, all the maids, all the donkeys, all the oxen, all the farm, everything except you. He's my master. He decides my scope, and that's what we got. Who's the other party here? Not the first words, but the last words, right? How can I do this and sin against I'm not talking my master, but my God. Yeah. So what we see here is Joseph saying that, you know, I have a master on earth and I'm responsible to him, but there's somebody superior to that, the supreme. It's God above. So when I sin against my master, I sin against two people, my master and my God. If I sin against you and, your ma and my master, husband and wife, I don't sin against two people. I sin against three, the God who created the two of you. If I sin against ten people, I don't sin against ten, but eleven, the God above. If I sin again against a Christian, I don't just sin against one, but two, his God. If I sin against a non-Christian, I sin against two the non-Christian, and the God who created him, whom he does not believe in. Yeah, it's always like that. So you see what happened in the first? The first was one way coming down. But what we just saw is one way going up. There is God in the green coming down, and then Joseph the channel, and then the blessing, which is the result, the effect. And then you have the blue box, which is Joseph here, answering to his master and answering to God. And everything is just one level up there, one person, God. Joseph says, I work well, you promoted me, 
excellent. But the Bible says it was on account of Joseph that God blessed. Not Joseph blessed on account of his talent and ability. God blessed. Yeah, and this kind of challenges us to remember that in all things, we ultimately answer to God. So when I sin against this brother and say sorry to him, it's not over. I have to say sorry to God, too. In all things, we answer ultimately to God. King David had a small holiday, but he didn't go far. He stayed home. From the rooftop, he looked down, saw a woman. And so he summoned the woman, and they lied together. And then she came back with a report, I'm pregnant. King David says, oh no, what should I do? And so he conceived a plan. And so he had the husband die at battlefield. And then now she's a widow, she's available. So David took her in, became his wife. And then the prophet Nathan came to David and says, you have sinned. David says, yes, I have. I repent. I got caught. And so he wrote a psalm in which he says, You, only you, I have sinned against. In all your judgments, you are righteous. You're always right when you said I've sinned, because I'm the one who's done wrong. And in all your decrees, you are clear, you are pure. The Lord does not make false judgments, wrong judgments, no fallacies. David says, I have sinned against you, Lord. By that time the husband is died, he can no longer apologize or return the wife. It's done. He only has to go to the Lord and says, Lord, against you, I have sinned. I thought by death, the trouble is over. He's not going to go claim his wife. He's not going to come claim his wife. And I don't have to say sorry to him. I thought it's done. In the human world, it is. But David says, against you and only you, I have sinned. In all things, we answer ultimately to God. In all things, we want to be channels of God's blessings. That's one way, coming down through the channel to the world. We want to answer to the Lord in all things. That's going up to our earthly bosses. Some of them are called parents. Some of them are called employers. Some of them are called teachers or principals. Yeah, and then up. There's one more, and we cannot leave him out because he's the top, the Lord God. But Yahweh was with Joseph in prison and gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. So the chief jailer gave into the hand of Joseph all the prisoners so that whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer did not supervise anything under Joseph's hand because Yahweh was with him. And whatever Joseph did, the Lord made to succeed. Now it happened after these things, the cupbearer and the baker offended their lord, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So Pharaoh put them in the jail where Joseph was in prison. Then both had a dream the same night, each man with his own dream. Now Joseph came to them in the morning, and behold, they were dejected. So he asked, Why are your faces so sad today? Then they said, We have had a dream, and there is no one to interpret it. Joseph said, Do not interpretations belong to God? Recount it to me, please. So the chief cupbearer said, In my dream there was a vine in front of me. On it were the three branches, and as it was budding, its blossoms came out, its clusters produced ripe grapes, Now Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, so I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Joseph said, this is the interpretation. The three branches mean three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office. You will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand according to your former custom when you were his cup bearer. 
Only remember me when it goes well with you. And please show me loving kindness by remembering me to Pharaoh and getting me out of this house. For I was in fact stolen from the land of the Hebrews. And even here, I have done nothing that they should have put me into the pit. And the chief baker saw that he had interpreted favorably. So he said to Joseph, I also saw in my dream. And behold, there were three baskets of white bread on my head. And in the top basket, there were some of all sorts of baked food for Pharaoh. And the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. Joseph answered, this is its interpretation. The three baskets are three days. Within three more days, Pharaoh will lift up your head off of you and will hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh off of you. Thus it happened on the third day, Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his office, and he put the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, just as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief cupbearer, who is now free, did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Hmm. Wow. So Joseph, now in prison, he was doing everything well, just like in Potiphar's house. Jailer says, oh, why don't you be in charge of everything? Joseph says, okay. Wow, that's like in Potiphar's house. Everything's okay. Two new prisoners came, both servants of the king, VIPs, and then they had each a dream. Joseph interpreted the dream. In three days, you're going to be restored. As for you, in three days, you're going to die. And after three days, it happened. But the Bible says, red word, the chief cupbearer forgot. He did not remember Joseph. Joseph says, when you're free, please tell Pharaoh about me so he can grant me mercy and perhaps release me. We don't know what happened those three days. Did he tell everybody the dream? He was so excited. And some people who believe in dreams congratulated him right away. So he was celebrating and then the moment came, went out, maybe jumping, rejoicing, quickly changed into his nice garments again, wash his hands, everything, to serve Pharaoh. And then all the festivities, now he has forgotten. We don't know, but he forgot. If he had remembered, what would he have done? Maybe told Pharaoh? Maybe go back to jail? Tell Joseph, thanks. I'm out. I'm free. You're right. He forgot. Hmm. When you forget, you can't give thanks. Is there anything to give thanks for? Mm, everything? It means I don't remember anything. Everything's okay. Mm, okay. Wow. Forgot. When you remember, you give thanks. If you forget, you don't. The little child was about to start the journey of life. And so the Lord sent an angel to the child and told the child, Behold, your life is in front of you. The journey of life is long, not short. And the way is dark, not bright. The little child says, How can I travel the way and finish the journey? When it is darkness, I fear the most. Angel says, the Lord God knows, even before you stated. And behold, here am I with a gift from the Lord, a lantern to assist you in the journey of life through the long, dark road. The little child was very happy. Thank you, Lord, for sending your angel giving me a lantern to guide my way as I travel the long journey of life. And so the child proceeded. The angel left. Not long after, a voice came to the little child. Do you not know that it is impossible to finish a journey so long, the way so dark? No one, in fact, has succeeded, though many have tried. 
The boy said, do I not read in the Holy Bible that Moses traveled the way and he finished? That David traveled the way and he finished? That Peter traveled the way and he finished? The boy says, do you believe all of those stories? Look around you. What do you see? The child lifted his eyes. Afar, to the left, to the right. And Satan asks, what do you see? I see darkness far away. I see darkness to my right. I see darkness to my left. Satan says, did I not tell you? It is impossible to finish the journey with a light so small when the darkness is so huge. The Lord has deceived you. He has given you an insufficient gift, a gift too small for a world so big. Really, the child asks, is he not the one who says he loved the world that he gave his only son for us? He says, yes, he gave his son, but I'm talking about the little lantern in your hand. If God truly loves you, he would provide for all your needs. If God truly wants you to succeed, he will give you a map for your whole life so that you know where you will be 10 years from now or 20 years from now or maybe 50 years from now. Don't we like that, to know what's ahead so we can plan? If you know there's traffic ahead, you want to know, right? If there's an accident ahead, you want to know so you can avoid the route. Same with our life. Satan says, if the Lord truly loves you, this is the light he will give you. Not this light. In the whole dark world, you alone, a little spot. But if the Lord loves you, he gives you a light that enables people to see far away, 50 meters, 100 meters, just like they do when they play sports at night. You can see your teammate. 50 meters ahead of you, 100 meters away, so that you can throw him the ball that he may finish and touch down at the other end. God is playing tricks on you. How can you trust a God like that? The little boy was convinced. He was not very sophisticated yet in his logic, but the environment appears that dark. And the counsel of Satan appears that true. And the lamb appears that small. Satan left, thinking his mission a success. He went off to trick other children. The little boy has stopped giving thanks for the lamb, for the lantern. It is no use. The journey is long, the way is dark, the lantern is small, the light is weak. If you were in that position, how will you convince yourself? Okay, if you were sent there to help the boy, what would you tell the boy? Many years ago in Japan, there was a lady. She was 18 years old when her mom died. And Tahaba Uneko always was close to the mom. Without the mom, she finds no reason to live. So with the departure of the mom, she decided to end her own that she may join mother. So one night, he went out to the railroad track, threw himself on it, and the train passed. But she didn't die. So people sent her to the hospital. After seven days, she woke up from her coma. She wanted to get down. She doesn't want to be treated, to be saved. She wants to die. And the quickest way is out the window. But she could not. Because she has no legs anymore.
She tried to remove the blanket. She could not because she has lost one arm. She has one arm remaining. That's the way to go. The arm has only three fingers left. She said, I failed once, I will not fail again. She started collecting sleeping pills, pretending to take them, and stored them under her pillow, waiting for the right volume so she can consume all at once and go see mother. Meanwhile, nearby there was a church, and somebody read in the news about this girl who tried to kill herself but failed so came to visit. She was very resistant. I'm in no mood to make new friends because I'm leaving this world. I'm ending, not beginning, not even friendships. But the Christian was persistent, would sing to her, make her little bread cookies, talk to her about God, Jesus, Light, hope, life. After three months, she prayed for the first time to God. Could not finish the prayer because she just wept and wept and wept until she strained. That night, she went to sleep. The last three months, never such sweet sleep like that night's. She woke up the next day. The world has changed. It has not. She has. But it appears to her that way. The world is bright. There is hope. Jesus loves me. Love exists. Love is real. And so she did not consume the sleeping pills. Soon she left the hospital. She got some prosthetics. So now she can walk met a young man, they got married. Young man was called by God, became a pastor. Now she's a pastor's wife. And in her testimony, she said, I did everything myself, cleaning the house, doing the laundry, the plate, dishes, cooking. I even do my own hair, not in the beauty parlor. You know, and I do all the sewing for the winter blankets and so forth. And then she said this, thank God I have three fingers. You have ten. You have two arms and ten fingers, but whatever you can do, she can do too. One arm, three fingers. She was very thankful. Praise God, I have three fingers. What does that mean? You thank God for what you have, not what you don't have. And you have, don't say you don't, you have more than three. Many other things. The little boy became a youth, a teenager, and then he became an adult. The little boy became an old man. And one day he was about to finish his journey through this world. He was lying on his sickbed. And behold, the dark voice came again. What? You finished the journey? It's impossible to finish the journey away so long and so dark with the lamp so tiny and the light so weak. The little boy says, while I'm here, Satan says, how did you do it? And the little boy says, who's now an old man, in his little boy voice, you know what? It was bright all the way. Satan says, impossible, you're lying. It was dark all the way. You saw it. I saw it. And today, I still see it. The little boy says, I don't really know what you mean, but everywhere... I go, it was bright. When I stand here, it's bright. 
I move 10 steps forward, that spot is bright. I mean, I go forward 100 meters, that spot was bright. It was bright all the way. Do you understand the parable? It's like this. How many sandwich, how much food did you consume in the last week? Two kilos, three kilos, four kilos, let's say five kilos. Let's say. What about last year? Uh, 50 kilos, 100 kilos, 150 kilos. What about the last five years? 500 kilos maybe? Yeah. If God were to give you all the food you need in this life today, your fridge is too small. That's why he doesn't give you such huge volume. He gives you this day your daily bread. He tells you a little so you can move forward some. Then in the next stage of your life, he tells you a little bit more so you can move forward some. Your fridge is too small to contain everything. So he doesn't give you everything all at once. But in installments. But you know what? Although your fridge is too small, your lantern is not too small. Because with that lantern, it's bright all the way. And that's why in everything, we give thanks. Small fridge, we give thanks. Small light, we give thanks. Everything from the Lord, we give thanks. Let's do that. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Three things, very simple for today. In all things, be a channel of God's goodness. In all things, answer to God ultimately. And in all things, be heartily grateful. our song of response, which today is Jesus, all for Jesus, and let this be our prayer that in everything we do, we would strive to do it for him, and that we would surrender our ambitions, hopes, and plans to his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Jesus, all for Jesus.
Let us receive the goodness of the Lord together. We thank you, dear Lord. Please accept our prayer through song. All for you, Jesus. All for you. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus, our Savior, and the love of God, our Father, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, our Counselor, be with us all helping us in all things to be heartily grateful, to be a channel of your goodness, and to answer ultimately to you. Blessings are pronounced this day in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated.